And then there is the possibility that the New York Attorney General, Letitia James, would have to start or would start seizing assets, maybe even buildings. How do you think that would play? I want you to remember this moment and don't forget it. If the New York Attorney General starts to take his homes away, starts to seize his assets, it's all going to be on camera. Pundits are going to sit there and scream about this. This man cannot be elected. You're going to create the greatest victimhood of 2024, and you're going to elect Donald Trump. If they take his stuff, he's going to say that this is proof that the federal government and the establishment and the swamp in Washington and all the politicians across the country and the attorneys generals and all of this, that this is a conspiracy to deny him the presidency. He's going to go up in the polls just like he went up every single time they indicted him. The indictment, um, let's not talk about whether it's justified or not, but it will prove the things that he's saying on the campaign trail and he will go up and it may just elect him president. Do not forget that. And I say this to the attorney general right now. If you play politics on this, this is what the secretaries of state did in Colorado and what they did in, I believe, is Maine. His numbers went up in both states. I don't understand. I'm almost speechless in how pathetic the opposition to Trump has been and how completely misguided. And this is a perfect example of it. Former President Donald Trump's legal battle today in New York City. And just now, a New York appeals court has agreed to slash the amount of the bond that Donald Trump must post to cover a 454 million civil fraud, or fraud verdict while he appeals it. So we're going to go from 454 to 175 million. Every time they think they've got them, they don't. Uh, let's get it. The truth. Hi, I'm Pastor Marty. This is the Afternoon Drive. Please make sure that you are subscribed to the channel. Once you are, smack the bell, click the word all. That'll give you notification of my rants, my ravings, and my undeniably flawless reasonings. Please like and share this video. By putting the video link on your social media platforms, you help us spread the word that we're here. We certainly know that the YouTube algorithm isn't going to help us on any level. So thank you in advance for that. Thank you for helping us grow our channel. Thank you for being a part of the Afternoon Drive. Well, they thought they had him. They have been predicting he's... He's broke Don. That's what they were calling him. You know, you couldn't raise this money because he's broke. No, he's a billionaire with billionaire assets, hard actual assets, you know, real estate, buildings, things. I've already explained this and I will do it again really quickly. From the time this arbitrary decision came down, he didn't get a trial by jury. He was declared right out the gate on day one, guilty by the judge, and he and Letitia James just came up with a figure of a penalty that he owed the state of New York. Nothing was ever proven that he has committed any crime here. He over-evaluated his properties. We've said this before, and we'll keep on saying it. Everybody that sells something over-evaluates it. That's how it's played. That's where the negotiation comes in. He says his property is worth one thing and he wants to borrow money against it. The bank comes in and says, nah, you know what? We don't think it's worth that. We think it's worth this. So we'll go ahead and we'll loan you this. Donald Trump takes the loan, buys what it is he's going to buy or does what it is he's going to do with it, pays the bank back with the interest they wanted. They make money. He does the thing that he wanted to do. He makes money. Everybody made money. There's no crime here. There's no victim here. Nobody brought this case. Letitia James has allowed New York to go to hell, and she's allowed crime to absolutely just 
thrash and destroy the city of New York. Businesses are pulling out. Stores are pulling out. Chain retailers and restaurants are all pulling out because crime is out of control. The place is an absolute cesspool toilet. Nobody wants to be there. She doesn't have time to prosecute any real crime because she has invested all of her time, her energy, and the state and city's resources to go after one guy that nothing that he did in any way adversely affected any New Yorker. New Yorkers, remember this. Election time. You know, quit your bitching and complaining. You keep voting for this crap. But I digress. I digress. They set it at $450 million. They give him 30 days to come up with it. And as I've already explained, you know it takes time to sell property. Like, time. Even if he had, had everything for sale the day the fine came down. Once the fine was announced, anybody buying his stuff is going to say, well, I'll hold on. Uh, this, you really need the money now. So now I'm in the driver's seat. You have to sell. I don't have to buy. <laughs> and it undervalues everything. It becomes a fire sale. And they knew that. And they knew that no bond issuer was going to issue any money against this. And the media licking its lips, thinking, he's broke, he's broke, he can't come up with the money. And then on Friday night, their heads exploded when it was announced that Truth Social will go public and Donald Trump right now is worth over $3 billion as a result of just Truth Social. See, what that does is no bond or bank was going to loan him any money to pay this to New York State because all of his wealth, the capital that he has is real estate, and this is a judgment against all that. So it really wasn't, he, he was in an awkward position. He couldn't put up his properties as collateral for a loan because if he doesn't come up with the payment by midnight Monday, the state of New York would take those properties and so the, the, the lenders would, would be out the collateral. Ah, but he was in a position he could use his stock value in True Social to negotiate a loan. But now he's not going to need to. Because the appeals court has stepped in and they have slashed it down to $175 million. Still a lot of money, but, you know, the Trump lawyers for weeks have been saying, look, get this down to $100 million. All right, it's, it's down to $175 million. The president should be able to put that $175 million together and they will keep their filthy hands off Trump Tower. Um... That all said, let me tell you what else was going on here. Reality check. Reality check. The other liberals and, shall we say, the power machine of the Democratic Party that actually runs things in New York, um, they did this. They, they check which direction the winds were blowing. And on one level, they understand that Frank Luntz is absolutely right. Absolutely right. You go ahead and start seizing his property. It is over for the Democrats in the state of New York. But they also understand that Kevin O'Leary and Mark Cuban are right as well. That you start seizing these properties and immediately businesses, billionaire corporation businesses are going to start pulling out of New York. Why? They'll be, they'll be scared. They'll be next. I don't know, this is just about Donald Trump. And that's what they were saying, which was like, wait a minute. So you're admitting you're persecuting one guy. But there's no political hit job going on here. Of course there was. Everybody with half a functioning brain cell knows that. I think the banks, I think places like Citibank and, and Bank of America that, that have headquarters within New York City, I think they went to the place they had to go, you know, the behind closed doors places. And I think they made it abundantly clear to these Democrats, to these deep staters, 
You start seizing his properties. We don't even like the guy. But this means we don't know when we might say or do something that you don't like and you try to seize our stuff. You seize his properties. We're out of here. We're out of here. We're going to pull. Can you imagine at midnight tonight is when this judgment would take effect? Can you imagine if the next day people in New York woke up to found, find out that Citibank said as a result of that, they find New York to be a hostile business environment. Therefore, by immediate order, they've closed every bank, every branch within the city and within the state. Can you imagine the panic that would create that people would only be told, look, you can, on, you can access your accounts online, but there is now no longer a physical branch which you can walk in. We are pulling out of the city. In the next number of days, you better have moved your... Oh, 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 oh! Can you imagine if a dozen banks did that? Can you imagine Fortune 500 uh, corporations pulling out of New York and going elsewhere? Somebody sat down the the eyebrow. That's what I refer to as the the governor of New York, Kathy Hochul. You ever looked at her eyes and her eyebrow? I mean, she's creepy. And they said, are, are you really completely trying to just destroy your state? As you go after Trump like this, you are going to lose business and business investors, not just American, but you, you, you do seem to like the foreign investors, they don't mind buying things in broke New York. They won't now because they'd be very, very sorry that you might, they might say something and you come and take their stuff. I am sure Letitia James has had a come to Jesus conversation with the real power brokers in the state. Trump appealed the decision by the diddler. That's what I refer to the judge as, the diddler. He looks like a guy who just sits there in a raincoat and he's naked underneath diddling himself and he can't wait to flash kids as they walk by. The diddler. Trump was appealing the decision. And here's basically what they were saying. This 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 was this was this was how out there this was. Okay, fine. It's your right to appeal but you will pay the fine and then the appeal can go forward. So in other words, we want to bankrupt you and then a year or two from now when the appeals court says, yeah, we, that we really overstepped our boundaries, here's a refund. Then it's too late. You won't be running for president and your life will be in destruction. That's what they were hoping for. That is absolutely what Erdogan and Letitia James are hoping for. They understand that in reality and in a real court proceeding, this thing does not last. It does not make it. You know how many hundreds of businessmen and banks petitioned the court on behalf of Trump saying, there's no crime here. There's no problem here. You've got guys like Kevin O'Leary and other billionaire businessmen that would be prepared to take the stand and explain to a jury exactly why this was not a problem. They know they're going to lose this on appeal. This was not about justice. This was about a persecution of a, a political opponent. This is third world banana republic bull hawk. And it's a Nancy Pelosi wet dream come to life. And now, after having some come to Jesus moments over the weekend and the harsh reality of what seizing Donald Trump's property would cost the Democrats in the long run, over the long term. New York State Appeals Court stepped in and cut it in half. $175 million, you got 10 more days to come up with it. He's already got the $100-plus plus million. President Trump, take a victory lap.